Hey guys, it's Will from EDM Tips. Today I'm going to show you how to create a classic piano house track from scratch. So I'm going to walk you through the live process of me creating that track from scratch, warts and all, and we will be covering sound design, we will be covering chord progressions, we will be covering mixing, vocal processing, how to choose the vocals so that by the end of it you can do exactly the same as me but obviously put your own spin on it. And of course as usual if you like it please like it, share it and subscribe to my channel. So without further ado let's hop into the door and get it done. Okay so let's get to it. The first thing I'm going to do is save my project. I'm going to select 122 for the tempo because it's that kind of piano house vibe. It's called House Trousers. Don't ask me why it's called House Trousers. Literally, don't ask me why it's called house trousers, but it's called house trousers. So the first thing I've done is I've put in a house kick drum, easy peasy pudding and pie, boom, boom, boom on every beat. We can all do that, right? Next is the bass line. Now, the beauty or the key to piano house is simplicity, right? So you don't want too many elements competing. You want that MK Mark Kinchin style where it's nice and sparse so everything can breathe through and sound really in your face. So <clears throat> the bass sound I've chosen is just, I think I got it from Splice. Let's have a listen to it. I've also tweaked it a bit so um, I've adjusted the decay and the sustain so it would have started out sounding like this a bit more sustained, but I wanted it a bit more punchy, so that is what I've done. And I've written this in the key of A. Is it A minor? Let's see. So I'm going to use the template technique again. So let's just put in all the white keys up to A again. And this is, so that's the entire scale of A minor. And if we copy and paste that down an octave, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And then I'm going to copy that, um, grab them all, sorry, move them over outside the clip by pressing uh, the left cursor. I'll just put the first one back. And now if we press fold, um, okay, so yeah, apart from this little connecting note in the bass line, uh, which is falls outside of the key of A minor, if we remove that, we can see that it is indeed in the key of A minor, which makes things super simple. So yeah, we are writing this track in the key of A minor. And the important thing with the bass is that it kind of falls off the beat. So these two are falling on the beat and they're kind of hidden from the bass line, sorry, from the kick drum. So they're kind of... But when they hit just before the kick drum on the 16th, with a syncopated rhythm, they're much more apparent. And that gives it the groove, that gives it that house groove. Now, if you wanted to, you could apply some actual groove using uh, a groove clip. If you're using Ableton, and you could do this in Logic and FL Studio too. So the one I always use is Logic uh, 16 Swing 64 and then I just kind of tweak it so I take the velocity right off so it's only adjusting the timing and then you can adjust the timing even more to rein it in a bit so it gives it that shuffle so that's with none on and that's with some on I'm just going to use a little bit of it just to give it a bit of that human swing feel so now we've got our bass line, which is written just using the notes in A minor, so it's easy if you use that template technique. Okay, next we can actually, well, you could actually duplicate that bass line. Um, I've just copied and duplicated it. I'm going to have one called sub bass, and this is so I can process them both separately and get a bit more uh, control from it. So, oh, you can see I've already put a decapitator on. Um, so I'll take that off first and I'll take this LFO tool off. I'll do that for this normal bass. So this is what it sounds like with no effects on at the moment, just the first bass line with the kick. Add a bit more swing, which is 
apply to both of those. Um, but I want to fatten this baseline up a bit. So I'm going to group them together. I'm going to roll the high frequencies off the sub bass. So we are just using the sub frequencies of that one. So we turn this off, put a high, uh, high cut filter. And now we can adjust the sub bass level separately from the kind of mid bass. So with the mid bass, I'm going to put another EQ on there and take out the sub bass. So now I can control them two separately. So you can hear we've added more sub bass. And now to fatten the whole bass sound up, I'm going to stick an LFO tool on it. Sorry, no, that comes afterwards. I'm going to stick a uh, decapitator on to add some saturation. Where are you? Here you go. This is by Sound Toys. So that's without it. And then I'm just going to add some side chain pump effects so the kick drum can kick through. So that's with LFO tool off and this is on. Cool, so we've got the bass line and we've got the kick. Now let's get a nice housey clap. And the key here is to select, if you're making tunes like MK, you would want kind of 909 drum machine samples, so like old school um, clap and open hat sounds. So where's my favorite claps? Uh, here we go. No, Will's favorite. Um, drums, let's get my... So I've got this lovely 909 crisp clap, which I made. Well, I didn't make it, but I kind of tweaked the sample and re-recorded it. So it's just how I like it. Um, so I'm going to program that in on every second kick. And now I'm going to add a little bit of room reverb for that. I'm just going to use the built-in reverb that comes, the stock reverb that comes with Ableton. So let's have a listen to that. I'm going to add it just to the clap though. These sends here I did by clicking this routing button here and you can set up create re return chain and assign it to one of your global aux channels. So top tip there. So I'll just turn those off again. Let's call that bass. But I want that kind of sucking gated Claire snare. Um, gated Claire? Never gated Claire. They hate it. Um, so I want that kind of gated snare sucking back sound, which you could do with pre-delay or you could do it with a compressor. That sounds a bit shit. I mean, rubbish. Sorry, mum. My mum doesn't watch these. Right. <laughs> So you can hear it, the clap itself, the dry clap, is triggering this sidechain compressor to duck the reverb, and then as soon as the clap stops playing, the reverb can kind of come up and, and reveal itself. In mono, sounds good. Just take out the bass frequencies of the reverb. Lovely. Okay, we could actually feed a little bit of the bass in there, see how that sounds. Then it gives it that Oliver Heldens type future house sound, which is a good sound if that's what you're trying to do. Right, okay. Next we are on to the all important piano chords. Now if you are making MK style piano house, in fact any kind of piano house really, the sounds that they will use will be the piano sound from the Korg M1. Uh, now I've actually got a sample which 
isn't so good because if you play it high, it plays much quicker, and if you play it low, it's a much slower sample. So if you actually get the Korg uh, plug-in, it's not much, it's like $50 or something, but um, you can get that. But I will include this Korg M1 piano sample below this video anyway, because I want you to be able to do this just using stock plugins in Ableton. FYI, if you don't have Decapitator or LFO tool, you can use a sidechain compressor here, uh, rooted from the kick, uh, instead of the LFO tool, sorry, and the Decapitator, instead of that, you can just use the Ableton Saturator that's built in as well. So that's how you get around that one. Anyway, so I've loaded in my sample, just a really simple, Korg M1 piano sound and what I'm going to do is now I'm going to write chords by following the bass line first and I'm just going to write still chords then we'll do the syncopated riff afterwards so first let's put these bass notes in I'm just going to copy and then paste them why does that sound so out of tune? It must be that one of these notes isn't hitting A. Aha! Bass trigger A4. That's why the, the, the root note of this bass sample is not C. Usually samples are sampled at C. So all I'm going to do to amend this is to uh, go into the sample and controls and I'm just going to transpose the bass sample. So A is one, two, three semitones below C. So if I just up this three semitones, it should now be in tune with the piano. And I will do that uh, the same with the sub bass. Whoops, so up three semitones because it's the same bass sample. And now we are going to build out the chords. Well, first I'll just make it so they're one uh, hit. And now we can put in all the notes of A minor natural again, using my template technique. Uh, move them to the side of the clip, just put the A in as well. Um, and I'm gonna grab all those, duplicate them down. So we've got two octaves of A minor, press fold. And now you can build your chords using just these notes by skipping one and then using the one above. Skip a note there, skip a note there. And we do that for the other ones as well. So you can hear it already sounds good. But given that we want a lovely kind of deep house, piano housey sound, we are actually going to add a seventh chords to these. So we are just going to miss one more note, then add another one. So it's got that lovely jazzy sound. So we've gone from this to this. Heart melter, baby. Cool. Okay, so we have got our chords. Now we are going to duplicate that and we are going to do a chord rhythm. And the way we are going to do that is to have that have it kind of play in between the bass notes to give the tune even more of that housey rhythm and housey housey groove. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just going to grab this uh, groove over onto this clip as well and over onto this clip, so it's the same as the bass, so it has the same swing settings. Okay. So if you're using 16th, you can just skip to, skip to, and you'll get a syncopated rhythm. You might want to extend some of them so they play. I'll 
extend them all in fact. Now I'm just going to copy and duplicate that. And we're still in the key of A minor template, so that's unfold, but we can start moving some of them up and down to add some variation. And you can also invert the chords. And the way you do that is to just grab any of the note from the chord, hold shift and press up, and you're just moving it one octave. And it just brings all the notes closer together, which can give it a nice jazzy feel. I'll leave it as it was for the time being though, so you can hear the difference. And I'm just gonna create this syncopated rhythm That's nice actually. Again, just make these syncopated chords. I prefer it there actually. Okay, now I'm going to add some effects to these chords. I'm going to add a bit of the same ream reverb. Whoops, what am I doing? And again, you could add the same sidechain pump using either the LFO tool, Nicky Romero, Romero, Nicky Romero Kickstart, or by doing a sidechain compressor triggered by the kick. We're just going to tone it back a bit. You could even widen out this sound here by using the free um, o Ozone Imager plugin. It's completely free from their website. I'll put a link to it below this video as well. in mono. So this is off and this is on. Okay next we are going to add some open hats to keep that groove going. So open hats, open hats, where are you? Yep, yeah, we'll just use a classic 909 open hat. And again, whack that in. Why aren't you showing drums? Because fold is on. Just put the groove on there. I'll tone back this shuffle a bit. Okay, and we are gonna add some vocals now. We will get to the mixing very shortly, but before we continue, drop me a comment below. Do you like this video? And more importantly, because if you say no, you'll break my little heart. But more importantly, what video do you want me to make? What genre do you want me to work through? So let me know in the comments below. I read everyone and we'll respond to them. Without further ado, let's crack onto the vocals. But leave that comment too. Right, vocals, we are going to use Splice to find some vocals. And this tune is in A minor natural, so it doesn't matter if the vocals we find are in A minor natural, as long as they are in A minor natural key, because we can simply transpose them uh, using any door. You don't need Ableton to transpose them, um, not nowadays. So what I'm going to do, vocal, female, keys, minor, what you got for me, Splice? What you're saying? Let's have a little listen. Lost the light. Yeah, 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 yeah. We just want the vibe right. That's the main thing. I 
I quite like this one. I mean, it, it, it is easier if you find them in A minor, obviously, because then you can preview them whilst playing along to your tune. But if not, you can just adjust the, um, the transposition inside the, um, inside the audio clip to the key that you're working in. So first, let's just get one in A minor. How can let you do this? I don't know if I'm ever gonna be the same. All right, I found it. Yes, I accept you. Into my life and into my heart. Same as the trance music. That vocal is now accepted. Right, where are you? How can it I'm just gonna drag you in, baby. I'm gonna drag the sh... I'm going to drag you in. Okay, now we've dragged the vocal in, the next most important thing is to get it sitting right in terms of tempo. So I'm going to go in, it's already warped. Uh, I know what tempo it is because it tells me in Splice 120 BPM. So why can't I change that? I'm going to choose Complex Pro. I'm going to turn off warp because it's going gar, gar for some reason. Right, okay, so I just need to put in 120 BPM there. And now it should be in time with my track, although it might not start in the right place, but that's easy. Gotta be I can let you do this. Okay, I'm gonna just create a little bit of space in front of my tune so the vocal can start on the beat. I can let you do this. I don't know if I'm ever gonna be the same. Yes. I'm gonna tweak it forward a bit. Can let you do this I don't know if I'm ever gonna be the same I can let you do this Okay, there we go. There is our basic. So let's continue. Let's make this sound better. Get it all sitting together, sounding fat, like a big fat MK thing in your face. Uh, let's do it. I can let you do this Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the kick and the bass together. I'm going to actually process the kick, make it sound big and fat. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to just group those together. The kick and the bass are now going to a bus, kick and bass bus. This is all taught in my eight-week masterclass, EDM production masterclass, the next one of which is launching very soon. So if you want to find out about that, click the link below because uh, spaces will be limited. But it's basically eight weeks of coaching and tuition for me um, and, and my team members, specifically an LA producer called Neil, who's freaking awesome. Right, I'm going to whack a decapitator on there. Right, fat drums. Wow, that open hat sounds bad. I need to resample that or get another sample and tweak it better because this is just noisy. Check in mono. I'm going to shape this a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of room reverb to the clap, uh, to the hat. Increase the volume of the clap. EQ on my piano. bit of delay on the piano 
colour it blue because that's how I roll. Just going to use the Ableton delay really quickly. This isn't done particularly well, but it's to give you an idea. Just to give it a bit more life. Now for the vocals, all important vocals. What you got for me, vocal lady? You do this. It's already got delay and uh, reverb on it. That's quite often the case when it comes to uh, samples from Splice and places like that, if you find acapellas. It's better to get them dry because then you can do your own work on them. Um, but uh, it's a bit, it looks a little bit kind of dynamic. I might rein some of it in with a bit of compression. I let you do this. And I check what's going on in the EQ. Be the same. Oh boy, this, I can let you do this. Sub frequency is not needed. Bit of build up there in the bass. Oh boy, this, I can let you do this. I don't know if I'm ever gonna be the same. I'm just going to add a bit of extra reverb or effect to the vocals because they're a little bit dry for my taste. I can't let you do this. I don't know if I'm ever going to be the same. Oh, boy, this, I can't let you do this. I don't know if I'm ever going to. I'm going to add an LFO tool to that reverb to make it pump as well. And so the last thing I'm going to do is add a little like um, interest sound at the beginning of the bar. I'm going to look for some old school classic rave sounds. Fresh. Fresh. This one will do. Just low in the mix just to give it a bit of depth and interest. Uh, but we want it in key, in the same key. So I'm going to do this by ear. And I'm going to add a bit of delay to that. So let's just get the delay again. One, two, three. I can let you do this. Ping pong. Okay, so we've got these little effects and stuff. Now I'm just going to add a cymbal crash, an old school cymbal sound. Uh, again, like a, I don't know if it is actually from a 909 cymbal, but uh, let's get that sound anyway. That's a pretty bad quality sample, but... But it's the right, um, it's the right sample from the right thing. It's just I need a newer, better one. There's a bit too much harshness in there. And I'm going to add a bit of that woo's very loud, so. A 
Um, and I'm going to add a bit of delay on the vocals because I want them uh, like pretty fat and in your face and interesting because that's the thing when there are very few elements in a track you've got lots of options to make the few elements there are super interesting so let's try this where are the vocals uh, that would be D Let you do this. I don't know if I'm ever gonna be the same. Oh boy, this I can't let you do this. I don't know if I'm ever gonna be the same. Oh boy, this I can't let you do this. I don't know if I'm ever gonna be the same. Oh boy, this I can't let you do this. I don't know if I'm ever gonna be the same. Oh boy, I can't let you do Just having a bit of delay to the symbol. And now I'm just going to copy and paste this so we can hear the rest of the vocals. Take away the crash and the woo for the second part of the bit. So there, at the end of the vocals, I'm just going to add a little repeat and tone, put it on a new track and I'm going to drop it an octave just for a bit of fun as a delay, a manual delay. And now I'm going to add a little bit of shuffle when for when this um, drum loop kind of kicks in. We want a bit of shuffle. So I'm going to just do it very simply. I'm going to find a shaker loop that all of you can get, all of you can find for free. I'm going to use an old one just to show what a little bit of shaker is going to add to the groove. Of EQ. And you could even add a little bit of the side chain pump to it so it fits in a bit better. Let's listen to the drums and the bass on their own. I like this LFO tool because you can shape it very specifically. So you can hear it's kind of cutting it out. That's off. And that's on. And I'm going to add a couple more of these voc manual vocal delays because it's fun. <laughs> like this. Do this, do this. Minus 12. Performance.
So there you have it guys, I hope you enjoyed this. You may have heard me mention that my new masterclass is coming up soon, so click the link below to find out about that. I've helped people achieve some really cool stuff with it like hitting number two in the Beatport charts and producing for a full-time living. So yeah, hit the link below. If you like this video, again, please share and subscribe to my channel and I will catch you next time. Cheers and happy producing.